Welcome to the software part of our course. Hope you guys all enjoyed it so far. This is the tutorial for Salmon. Well, Salmon is a fast, accurate, and biased tool for quantifying the expression of transcripts using RNA sequencing data. Imagine that you feed the cute Salmon on the top with thousands of RNA sequence reads, and it could simply give you feedback of quantifying counting results. Isn't it fantastic? Well, Salmon is the first transcriptome-wide quantifier to correct for fragment GC content bias. It's fast because it used pseudo-alignment techniques. It's accurate because it combines a new dual-phase parallel inference algorithm and feature-rich bias models with an ultra-fast read mapping. It's bias-aware because it could account for sequence-specific fragment GC and positional biases. Salmon generally consists of three components. The first one is a lightweighted mapping model. Second is an online phase that estimates initial expression levels and model parameters. The third one is an offline phase that refines expression estimates. For this tutorial, we will be focusing more on how to run Salmon on clusters such as Odyssey. To run Salmon on clusters, you have to go first create a Salmon index file. In order to quantify transcript level abundances, Salmon requires a tra target transcriptome. This transcriptome is given to Salmon in the form of a multiple FASTA file, with each entry providing the sequence of a transcript. Next, we are supposed to build an index on our own transcriptome. The index is a structure that Salmon uses to quasi-mapping RNA sequencing reads during quantification. The index needs only to be constructed once per transcriptome, and it can then be reused to quantify many experiments. Here is an important note. Please do not build the index on the genome of the organism whose transcripts you want to quantify. Here are the details about the command for creating Salmon index file. We simply use the Salmon index command to make it come true. Generally, Salmon could perform two methods for mapping reads to transcriptomes. The default method is the quasi-mapping method, which is a newer and faster alternative method instead of the original one. If you prefer the original method of lightweighted alignment, you could simply change the command type from quasi to fmd. Here, t identifies the path to the transcriptome files. I is the path to the index file, while K is the threshold for auxiliary k hash. This is the details about the batch code that could be performed on the clusters. As for output, move to your file location where you stored the summon index. You could find your file of summon index here, and this file could be further used for following steps. Since we didn't change the default method, a quasi-mapping index was obtained here. The next step is sample quantifying. This could be performed with the Simon quant command. Generally, two types of files are needed here. The first one is the alignment results generated by any aligner you like. Second one is the sequence of the transcriptome that is supposed to be quantified. Here, a indicates the path to the file for quantifying. O is the path to the output file. This is the details about the batch file that could be run on the clusters. The P indicates the number of threshold. You could also set the number of bootstraps to help you compute the bootstrap abundance estimates. You could also set the sequence bias to help you come up correct for sequence specific biases in input data. As we do here, you could also set the GC bias command to help you correct for fragment level GC biases in input data. Let's take a look at the output. Move to your path to the output file. The main result was stored in the quant.sf file. You could find the names for the transcription terms in, in this file. This file also contains the original lens effective length, TPM, and number of reads. These records could be further used for the downstream analysis. 
Well, the many downstream analyses are all differential expression analyses. Three R packages in Bioconductor could do it perfectly. I also recommend Sloth here, since Sloth always reminds me of the cute slow bear waiting for salmon jumping out from the river. To explore more about salmon, you could go to their GitHub lab here. You could also find their details about the algorithms at their original paper published on Nature Methods in 2017. This is the end of our tutorial. Thanks for your attention and hope you're enjoying your salmon.